it took some time to get here. There were the early struggles, losses in the playoffs to the likes of the Ducks. But finally, the Vancouver Canucks have reached their full potential. The defending Stanley Cup champions look for the first back-to-back -back win since Detroit. Of course, in the sim, nobody has matched the back-to-back -back win. Nobody's secured back-to-back -back wins. We have the chance to do it now. This team, we finally overtaken the Ducks, the Kings, the Sharks. We've solidified the fact, after now beating them two years in a row, that we are better than the Blackhawks. But it comes down to this matchup in the final against the New York Islanders, who swept Taylor Hall, Max Pacioretty, and the Ottawa Senators. We'll take a look at their lineup, of course, as we always do. Centers, so they have at least one person playing out of position. Matthew Barzal, only at 83. He really hasn't grown, but he has 11 points in 16 games. John Tavares, still there, 93 overall, 10 points in 16 games. And our old buddy, Austin Zarnick, an 85 overall, 8 points in 16 games. Left wings, oh boy. Chris Kreider, an 85 overall, 10 points in 16 games. Michael Dalcall, Jesus Christ. A franchise level player, 93 overall, 10 points in 16 games. No fucking wonder. Luke Kerwin, an 84 overall. Rich Belak, an 84 overall. Josh Bailey, an 83. Tim Gettinger, an 85. And our old pal, Lubomir Mashenko, who is up to an 82. We, of course, traded him away because of his bottom six potential. It was a third round pick of ours. He's only played one game in the postseason, but that is an impressive list of forwards right there. That's, that's dangerous. And as far as right wings go, Ryan Strom, 12 points at an 87 overall. Would have been nice for you to do some of that for us in Boston. Brock Nelson is currently injured, so that could be huge for us. He's only an 84, but he had 8 points in 15 games. And Joshua Hosang, another old friend of ours from the Bruins GM mode series, an 85 overall, has 7 points in 16 games. Defensively, I know they have a certain somebody because he was one of the defensemen we were trying to get for quite a long time. Ryan Pulock has turned into a franchise-level defenseman. He is a fucking 96 overall, and I am pretty sure he is the highest-rated player in the game. I do not believe there is somebody higher-rated. At least I haven't seen them when looking at the stats. They also have Nick Letty, Parker Watherspoon, Austin Hansen, Calvin DeHans at 87, Martin Gurnett only played two games since 78, uh, Jurgen Germain in 84, and then you have two other guys here, Numa Linen or how the fuck you pronounce it, Nemo Linen, and Matt Finn. So basically, they have a better defensive core than us. I mean, that's undeniable. A 96, what, 387s? 387s, an 84 in Hansen, and an 84 in Jurgen Germain. That is an unbelievable defensive core. As far as the goalies go, who's it going to be? You're going to be fucking shit. They have a goalie named DiPietro. Of course they do. <laughs> Michael DiPietro, high starter potential, only an 84 overall. He has an unreal 939 save percentage so far in this postseason. Demko's at a 937, and he's a higher overall. But, of course, they have a goalie named fucking DiPietro. <laughs> it's amazing. I do want to take a look, though, seeing as this is the finals. I do want to see how their players did, of course, in the regular season, because I know Tavares was towards the top in terms of point total, 88, 69 for Dal Cole, 60 for Strom, Ryan Pulak, 48. So surprisingly, I mean, they have, you know, good scoring totals. Mashenko actually had 23 points, but only three players were really high up in scoring. Strom, Dal Cole, and Tavares. How did DiPietro do in the regular season is my question. Only a 925 save percentage. This is going to be an interesting series. They have some really really high-end players but that 84 overall goalie who knows i mean we saw it with the boston series back with uh, the florida panthers and rainier burkoff 84 overall goalies have a tendency to be pretty damn dangerous for some reason but let's not waste any more time game one of the stanley cup final of course we have home ice advantage Game one against the Islanders. I don't know what to expect here. They have a very strong defensive core. The goal is a question mark. Some of their other players, I mean, it's just, who knows? First period of game one, scoreless. Second period, wow. I was not expecting that. The triangle of death. Stamkos, 
Chitrin. And then with 16 seconds left, he loves those late goals. Danton Heinen killing them in shots now, 29 to 14. And the Vancouver Canucks make a statement in that second period. Can we hold on though? As we enter the third, we still have them doubled up in shots. A 3-0 lead. I cannot see Heinen blowing this. And hopefully this jump cut isn't too awkward because a fucking lovely motorcycle decided to drive right by and really pick up on the audio capture. Third period, 10.43 to go. Let's do this. Come on, boys. That's your Demko. 20 saves so far. We have them almost doubled up in shots. Again, they haven't had a shot in at least the past eight minutes. They finally get one, and it's Hansen to ruin the shutout. Who the hell cares, though, man? <laughs> they went quite a while without getting a shot. It doesn't matter. Hansen gets the goal, but it's a 3-1 final. That second period, just dominant. Stamkos, all three, or had a point on all three goals, which is amazing. 21 of 22 saves for Thatcher Demko. And for those who are counting, that is, of course, our 13th win of this postseason. We are three wins away. As we sim to game two here, it is game six for the Utica Comets against the Portland Pirates. Their second chance to close them out and seal a spot in the Caller Cup final. And they do just that with a 1-0 overtime win. Both teams in our franchise going to the final. But the focus again shifts now. Game two against the Islanders. Can we finally get that elusive 2-0 series lead? I think we can. I think we can here. Why I resorted to a children's story for emphasis, I have no idea. First period, let's sim this and see what happens, and that is okay. Well, fuck me then. Brock Nelson, 59 seconds into it. Michael Dalcall, and then Michael Dalcall again. Steven Stamkos gets a goal back, but that is uh, not very good. Second period, though, can we stage a comeback, and we start one. It's Drake Kajula, and that sets up an interesting third period. We're only down by a goal can we continue to get to dphro and continue to score goals and we do it's gabe velarde and now this is a real interesting third period here with 10 minutes to go can we complete the comeback and get that 2-0 series lead five minutes to go now somebody step up austin matthews maybe you've been quiet and we are going to overtime in game two of velarde Forced it. Kajula's second period goal helped. Stamkos' goal at the end of the first period really helped. Let's do this. It is overtime for the first time here in the finals. Come on. Oh, my God. I could, why is Raymakers in? Jesus Christ. I couldn't even say, come on, boys. Barzal scores 50 seconds into it on Raymakers. I hope to God Demko isn't hurt. But we still cannot get that 2-0 series lead. Three points from Michael Dalcall. Is Demko actually hurt this time? I don't think he is. Is it just a one-game injury again? Again, Thatcher Demko pulled. Whether due to injury or not, I have no idea. But once again, we can never secure that 2-0 series lead. Who is Utica playing in the finals? The Stockton Heat. So Vancouver versus Calgary in the finals there. But game three, the series shifts to Brooklyn. And this is a crucial, crucial game three. Let's do this, though. First period... We get off to a good start, though. Seth Jones with the opening goal. Second period, and it's Jake Vertanen with another beautifully timed goal on his part pretty early in the second period. Third period, though. Two-goal lead, the most dangerous lead in hockey, an early penalty kill is successful. We get a power play. We can't score. Michael Dalcall can, though. Fucking 93 overall. Not surprised there. Ten minutes to go. Still up by a goal. Can we hold on? We came back in the last game, but fell just short. And they come back in this game. Fucking Michael Dow call again. A power play for the Islanders. Please kill it. And for the second straight game, we're going to overtime. I mean, the comeback failed for us. Hopefully the comeback failed for them. I don't know. Or fails for them. We're going to overtime. We kill off an immediate penalty. Hey, at least we made it beyond the 52nd mark. My God, but it doesn't matter. Luke Kerwin. With the goal, we lose two consecutive games in overtime. We come back to force overtime in game two. We blow it. And then we give up, or we're the victims of a comeback in game three. And we are suddenly down two games to one in this series. Game four, 
Needless to say, I'm concerned after losing two straight games in overtime. Well, let's do this. Let's tie this series up right here. If we fall three games to one down, we're pretty much fucked. Let's be honest here. First period, Ryan Strom, the lone goal. We were doubled up in shots. Second period, eh, fucking John Tavares, and the offense is just dead. They, we're, fuck, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, boys, but we're fucked here. I just... It, uh, God, I just got such a bad feeling about this. I don't see it happening. And again, falling 3-1 down to the Islanders here would be tragic. He's an 84 overall goal. He fucking Jermaine. The defenseman with the goal. You know what? Fuck it. Finish the game. Or no, Castles gets a goal. Heinen gets a goal. Excuse me. And Ka are you fucking serious? Huh. <laughs> well... I hit the B button to finish the game, and it was about to hit yes, and then they decided to show up. Cole Castles with his biggest performance as a Vancouver Canuck. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Castles less than a minute later, Heinen, and then just a minute and a half later, Cole Castles again. We're going to overtime for the third straight game. That is one of the most ridiculous comebacks we've ever seen. We've been on the opposite end of a comeback like that, but this is now three straight games to come back. Third time's the charm to win in overtime, I hope, or we're fucked and that was all for naught. Please, somebody, Steven Stamkos, what a fucking comeback. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, guys, that was just absolutely insane. Cole Castles, though, Danton Heinen continues to put up points, and we just completed the fucking comeback of the century. That is win number 14. Two wins away. Three games left, potentially, in this series. It's a best of three at this point, guys. My God, the, what a fucking comeback. Game five, back home in Vancouver. Are we going to overtime again is the big question. I will give you an update as well in the comments. They won game one, seven to one, but then lost game two, two to one. The focus, though on the main team and this crucial game five. I, I do not want to fall down three games to two in this series and have to win two straight games. Let's do this first period and we get off to a fucking great start. Seth Jones and Bo Horvat, we talked about it. Yes, as nice as it would be for the Stamkos, the Drew and the Matthews, although the latter of the two have been uh, pretty quiet in this series. It's these type of guys that are going to get it done for us. Second period, though. A lot of hockey yet to be played, and we hold on. Third period. 2-0 lead. Fucking somebody just shoot Michael Dalcall with a fucking tranquilizer and get him off the ice, please. John Tavares gets a goal on Raymaker. Oh, my God. Why is Raymakers in? I didn't put Raymakers in. He gives up two goals to Tavares and Strom. Fucking less than 30 seconds apart. Five minutes to go. Oh my god, are we going to overtime for the fourth straight game? We are. Is Demko hurt? Like, what keeps happening? What keeps happening? Demko is the starter. Raymakers is in. Like, does he have fucking mono and can only, like, finish half the game before he feels like he's been through fucking... Just... Oh my god. Overtime. Again, for the fourth straight game. Let's do this. A 3-2 series lead on the line, and it's Ryan Strom with the goal. We blow a two-goal fucking lead. And now our backs are against the wall. Fucking Ryan Strom and John Tavares. Is Demko hurt officially this time? No. So what is happening? Why does Raymakers keep ending up in the goal if Demko's not hurt and he's not getting shelled? I don't get it. I do not understand why Demko keeps getting pulled. I just don't. Oh my fucking god. Just taking a step back before we sim this, the fact that we've gone to four straight overtime games, all four featuring a comeback has been ridiculous, but this is obviously not a very nice situation to find ourselves in. Although having the chance to force a game seven at home would be very, very interesting. But game six, before then, can the Islanders win it on home ice? Can we get the job done and at least force that game seven? First period, and my God, what a fucking response. Austin Matthews, Danton Heinen, 
and Jake Vertanen. Two goals for that second line. Vertanen and Matthews have been pretty quiet lately. Matthews has been just silent since the second round, at least in terms of goals. Three goals on eight shots, beating DiPietro. Still have 40 minutes left, though. Anything can happen. Second period, a goal apiece. Druen on Soderstrom. DiPietro is out. John Tavares, though, gets the goal back. It's only a three-goal lead. Anything can fucking happen here. We are not guaranteed a Game 7 yet. Let's do this, though. Five minutes gone. Still no goals. A power play for the Islanders. Please kill it off. Somebody shoot Michael Dalcall with a tranquilizer at this point, and John Tavares for that matter. Five minutes left. Can we hold on? Drake Kajula, the empty netter, boys. A 5-1 win in Game 6. The Islanders crack under the pressure in front of their hometown fans. What a performance. Thatcher Demko, 29 of 30 saves. Two points apiece for Drake Kajula and Jake Vertanen. That is win number 15. And it all comes down to this next game. Game 7. It all comes down to this. The chance to be repeat champions. It's been an unreal season after 50 wins. Another division title. A crazy comeback against the Sharks, beating Chicago in six games. Unfortunately, this is really our only chance at a trophy. The uh, Utica Comets have really fallen off, losing three straight games, only one goal in the past three games. This is our one chance at some hardware here. But overall, it's been an amazing rebuild, an amazing retooling to get to this point. And it all comes down to this. Game seven on home ice, the cup on the line. Can we get it done? First period. My God. <laughs> Tim Gettinger gets the first goal, but then it's Gabe Velarde, Steven Stamkos, and Nikita Triamkin with probably his first goal of the postseason that I can remember. Three goals on DPH on 11 shots, man. And for once, the 84 overall goalie, he's had some strong games, but for once, he's not just standing on his head. 40 minutes to go. Second period, scoreless. They're out shooting us, but it comes down to this third period. Come on, boys, just hold on. One more goal could seal it. Ugh, Hansen, though. With a goal, Stamkos gets it back, though, on DPH or a power play for the Islanders. We hold on, and fucking Drake Kajula gets another goal. It's 5-2. to two. Oh, my God, we might blow them out just like we did. Last year against the Philadelphia Flyers. They have a power play. We need to pause here because it has the tendency to skip ahead. I know we saw the cup celebration last time out, but I don't really care. You know, even despite the fact. All right, well, that might be an awkward pause because that was a hell of a time to accidentally kick out my mic wire. But despite, I don't even remember what I was saying. I don't even remember what I was saying at this point. Let's do this. Oh, despite the fact that we don't even get the banner raised anymore for the first home game of the new season. You know what, there's two minutes left. Let's do this. We're winning this. Then, Realistically, they could come back. And I know we've already seen the animation before, but I don't care. Guys, you know at this point, we've done it. It is a repeat at this point. The Stanley Cup is coming back to Vancouver for the second year in a row. Just what? Just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous that the rebuild has gone as perfectly as it has. We could not have hoped that this for this rebuild to go better. We just couldn't. Have. This has been absolutely perfect the way we rebuilt this team, reshuffled after having to get rid of Taylor Hall. What a goddamn run! Really good postseason in a big save by Patrick Demko. You talk about cutting down the angle, perfectly executed by the. Goal. Just what a postseason run for us. Like I said, it might be a little bit cheap because it's five to three, and you know they could easily, <clears throat> as I continue to lose my voice, they could easily come back in this. But fuck it. Screw them, they had their chance. Michael Dow call to the box. I might go bounce on him as if it's a fucking EASHL game just because I feel like it. But man, two consecutive Stanley Cups that say the rebuild was complete. Matthews. I want more goals like we had last time out. Flat pass, please. Oh, I almost stuck it. It's just ridiculous. They still have a goal against TPH. Alright, 
Can we get anybody open, please? No. Kicked out of the scrum. The boards are there. Jula. Yeah, it gets blocked. Jared McCann, Austin Matthews. What a fucking save that was. 128 to go. Again, maybe I should have reduced the time to be uh, not fully realistic. Kajula cross threes couldn't get it right. He lost the fucking beast. Gettinger on Seth Jones. We get back here. And that's an uh, interesting decision. Come on, Valiev. There we go. Not the guy you want leading the rush. But let's see if we can hit Matthews back here. Windmill and Wabberspoon takes it away. Oh shit, Austin Zarnik. Don't you fucking windmill me. Windmill me back. And Frick. Jones, Matthews, Matthews. Let's get up, guys. Jared McCann. See what you can do here. Great job. Not much. You get bumped off the puck by Nick Letty. 45 seconds to go. DPH vacates left. The net. Seth Jones just killed somebody. If I'm kind of slurring words here, because I'm just a little bit sick. Danton Heinen, though. We'll get him the empty netter, boys. And that seals it. The Stanley Cup is coming back home to two consecutive Stanley Cups. Win number 16. The mission is complete. Renat Valiev, the assist on the empty net power play goal for Danton Heinen. And man, it's, it's, like I said, it was a good feeling when we won the Cup last year. Better feeling now because it's like, okay, we're actually getting rewarded for putting together a good team, which is insane. Not to say the Islanders have a fucking terrible team. Michael Dow calls is insane. But very, very satisfying to know that we're getting the win here. Good save by Demko as all of my players crashed over to one side. Not sure why. Have a good save from Demko. Stammer, get it out or don't. Heinem, where the fuck are you going? Leave the breakout, please. Thank you. That's going to be an obsessive. That was awful. But it doesn't matter. Because we are just men the oh, no, hold on, I need to get Carlson the puck. Carlson, screw Stetcher, Carlson's a champion. Two straight, I'll say it again, two straight consecutive champions for the first time since the fucking Detroit Red Wings. We get it done, this team living up to its potential, we overcome the ridiculousness known as Ryan Pulock, John Tavares, and Michael Dowcall, and for the second consecutive year now, Steven Stamkos and his terrible, hideous looking playoff beard. For the second consecutive year, I will continue to say it because I'm so goddamn happy that we pulled this off. It's not Gary Bettman because if it was, I'd have Stamkos kick him in the chest. But Steven Stamkos raises the cup. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Two straight years. And again, I said it at the end of last season. This series will absolutely continue. Why stop at two? Three, four, five, six. Hell, we'll bring on LeBron and Dwayne Wade here. We will continue to win cups, goddammit. Tanner Pearson, how happy are you that we traded for you? Give Demko that trophy. Was that a duplicate Demko? Didn't he already get the trophy? This game's fucking weird with duplicate players. But the team picture, the best part, it's pretty much all the same team with a couple of new faces. Eric Carlson, wonder if he'll win the Norris. He won the cup, though. For the, let me say it one more time. Say it with me now. For the second consecutive year, we get to see that picture. That is win number 16. Mission accomplished, guys. And that will do it for this episode and for this season. Of course, next season, like I said, the journey begins again. Can we go for the three-peat? Who the hell knows? I don't expect it. I don't know what kind of changes we're going to have to make. We know we have, again, a very similar situation with a lot of free agents coming up. We're going to have to cycle things around. But we did what we had to do to win two consecutive titles, and now we may have to deal with the consequences. But for now, we celebrate, and that'll do it for this one, guys. Of course, if you have enjoyed, make sure to drop a like down below, as always. And if you haven't already, subscribe. 
to continue following this series because this very well may be the last Stanley Cup in this series unless we can pull off a miracle managing the cap. But we'll find out how it all breaks down in the next episode. I will see you guys then again. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.